In the heart of Jerusalem's old city, amidst the ancient walls of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, a divine miracle has occurred. Footage captures the moment when the eyes of the centuries-old crucifix, steeped in history and reverence, opened after an eternity of being closed. This extraordinary event, while rare, promises to captivate hearts and minds. So let's dive into this video today to unravel the tale behind this remarkable occurrence. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, also known as the Church of the Resurrection, sits within the Christian quarter of Jerusalem's old city. Dating back to the 4th century, it holds immense importance as Christianity's most sacred pilgrimage destination worldwide. Believed to be where Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and resurrected, it draws Christians from all corners of the globe. For centuries, the church has served as a major pilgrimage site, attracting devout Christians from far and wide. Its control has remained under a complex arrangement involving various Christian denominations and secular entities for over 160 years. These arrangements, some dating back even further, highlight its significance across different religious groups. The primary denominations overseeing different sections of the church include the Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, and Armenian Apostolic, with smaller roles played by the Coptic, Syriac, and Ethiopian Orthodox churches. These denominations conduct daily Holy Mass, further solidifying the church's spiritual importance. Cultural and religious significance, the church's architectural grandeur and historical significance make it a focal point for religious and cultural tourism in Jerusalem. It hosts various ceremonies and rituals, attracting visitors seeking to immerse themselves in its transcendent aura and storied past. The Holy Saturday's Holy Fire Ceremony, led by the Greek Orthodox Patriarch and joined by the Coptic and Armenian Patriarchs, takes place on special occasions. Hidden within the intricate iron latticework of the Coptic chapel lies the cherished altar of the Coptic Orthodox community. Historically, the Georgians held the key to the edicule, a term whose secrets will be revealed as we delve deeper into this topic. The edicule is a sacred structure within the chapel, and its significance unfolds as we explore its mysteries. This revered sanctuary, cherished by Christians worldwide, recently witnessed an extraordinary event of divine intervention. This celestial manifestation, perceived as a divine sign, resonated profoundly within the hearts of pilgrims and believers alike, underscoring this revered site's preserved sanctity and allure. Origins of the Church of the Holy Sealer Behind the speaker, a statue of the Blessed Mother and the crucifixion place in the Church of the Holy Sealer can be seen. Exploring the origins of this sacred place covers two important sites, Golgotha and the Supplier. Understanding its importance and the circumstances leading to its genesis offers valuable insights into the Church's significance. Understanding the Church of the Holy Sealer's miraculous event requires a profound comprehension of its historic significance and spiritual connection to Jesus Christ and early Christians. Delving into its context and components provides a deeper understanding of the remarkable event within its sacred walls. The Church of the Holy Sealer traces its roots back to the crucifixion of Jesus in first century Judea around AD 30 or AD 33. This pivotal event recounted in the four canonical gospels of the New Testament and supported by epistles and other ancient sources holds historical and spiritual significance. Despite widespread acceptance, historians may not universally agree on all the specifics. According to the canonical gospels, Jesus underwent arrest and trial by the Sanhedrin, followed by sentencing from Pontius Pilate, leading to his scourging and crucifixion by the Romans. His death is depicted as a sacrificial act for the atonement of sin. The canonical Gospels narrate the stripping of Jesus' clothing and the offering of vinegar mixed with myrrh or gall, likely to alleviate his thirst. Against the backdrop of this historical narrative, the Church of the Holy Sealer recently became the stage for an extraordinary event. Following his arrest and trial, Jesus was crucified at Golgotha, positioned between two convicted thieves, according to the Gospel of Mark. 
He endured agony until around 3 p.m., when he breathed his last breath. A soldier traditionally identified as Longinus pierced Jesus' side with a spear, confirming his passing and resulting in the flow of blood and water from the wound. After his death, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus took his body down from the cross and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb. On the third day following his crucifixion, Jesus was resurrected from the dead, as stated in 1 Corinthians 15.4. He appeared to his disciples on multiple occasions before ascending to heaven. These events, dating back to the 4th century, hold profound significance in Christian theology. The Church of the Holy Sealer encompasses two sacred sites revered in Christianity, Calvary, where Jesus was crucified, and the tomb where his resurrection occurred. Originally a Jewish burial ground, the site later hosted a pagan temple, in 312, Constantine the Great embraced Christianity, inspired by a vision of a cross in the sky. He issued the Edict of Milan, granting legal status to the religion. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of the Church's establishment and the embrace of Christianity as the state religion. Discovery and Construction of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre Bishop Macarius of Jerusalem and Bishop Eusebius of Caesarea sought Constantine's approval to excavate the tomb site. During their excavation, they discovered three crosses near a tomb. The cross, believed to possess miraculous healing powers, was identified as the true cross upon which Jesus was crucified. This discovery led to the identification of Calvary by the Romans. In 326 CE, Constantine commanded the construction of a church at the site. Over time, all accumulated soil and debris were cleared from the cave, revealing a rock-cut tomb believed to be the burial place of Jesus. Constructed under Constantine in the 4th century, the church was later demolished by Al-Hakim in 1009. Subsequently, the church and rotunda were rebuilt, with alterations made by Emperor Constantine IX Monomachos and the Crusaders. These modifications significantly deviated from the original design. Enclosed within a 19th century shrine known as the Edicule, the tomb remains a focal point. Since its establishment in the 4th century, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre has been a significant pilgrimage site for Christians. It is revered as the traditional place of Christ's resurrection, reflected in its original Greek name. The church also houses the last four stations of the Via Dolorosa, symbolizing the final stages of Jesus' Passion. Today marks an exciting day as we explore the archaeology within the Edicule, the shrine believed to contain the original bedrock where Jesus was laid after his death. According to the New Testament, Jesus was crucified at Golgotha, also known as the Place of the Skull, located beyond the city walls in an area of stone quarries. Approximately ten years after Jesus' crucifixion, a third wall was constructed, encompassing the site of his execution and burial within the city limits. This historical context supports the placement of the Holy Sepulchre within the present-day Old City of Jerusalem. The church now includes both sacred locations. The Basilica, known as the Martyrium, enshrines the traditional site of Calvary, while the Anastasis, meaning resurrection, encloses Jesus' cave tomb. Consecrated on September 13, 335 CE, the church still retains its original wooden doors from 326 CE, highlighting its ancient magnificence. At the entrance of the church, a stairway ascends to Calvary adorned with lavish decorations. Another stairway descends from this site to the ambulatory, which houses two chapels, Greek Orthodox and Catholic. The Chapels of Calvary the Greek Orthodox Chapel's altar rests upon the Rock of Calvary, also serving as the twelfth station of the cross. It is accessible for touching through a designated hole in the floor beneath the altar, allowing pilgrims to connect with this sacred site. Located just beneath the Golgotha Chapel on the ground floor is the Chapel of Adam. Legend holds that Jesus was crucified directly above the burial site of Adam's skull. Some accounts suggest that Christ's blood flowed down the cross and into the rocks, filling Adam's skull. Through a window in the 11th century apse, visitors can glimpse the Rock of Calvary, bearing a crack traditionally attributed to the earthquake following Jesus' death. 
However, some scholars argue it resulted from quarrying against a natural flaw in the rock. A statue of Mary, situated between the Catholic and Greek altars, signifies the 13th station of the cross. Near the entrance of the church lies the Stone of Anointing, also known as the Stone of Unction, where Joseph of Arimathea prepared Jesus' body for burial. This tradition emerged during the Crusader era and was notably recorded by the Italian Dominican pilgrim Rico da Monte Croce in 1288. The current stone was installed during the 1810 reconstruction. The wall behind the stone is distinguished by its vibrant blue biones adorned with red banners bearing the symbol of the Brotherhood of the Holy Sepulchre. Lamps illuminate the area, while a modern mosaic adorns the wall depicting the anointing of Jesus' body. To the right, the mosaic shows the descent from the cross, while to the left, it portrays the burial of Jesus. Initially a temporary addition, the wall was constructed to reinforce the weakened arch above it. The Rotunda and Edicule Following damage from the 1808 fire, the rotunda, which divides the entrance from the Catholicon, currently constructs the view. It rests upon four now empty and desecrated Crusader graves. While it is no longer required for structural support, there is debate over whether it should be regarded as the 13th station of the cross. Some associate the rotunda with the lowering of Jesus from the cross, positioning it between the 11th and 12th stations on Calvary. The lamps above the Stone of Unction, decorated with cross-bearing chain links, are donated by Armenians, Copts, Greeks, and Latins. An elaborate stand adorned with lamps, candles, and incense is suspended above the Stone of Unction. Within the edicule, two chambers hold significant relics. One houses the Angel's Stone, believed to be a fragment of the stone that sealed the tomb, and the other contains the Tomb of Jesus. To deter pilgrims from taking fragments of the original rock as souvenirs, a layer of marble cladding was added to the tomb by 1555. This preservation effort ensures the sanctity of these revered sites within the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. In October 2016, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre witnessed a significant event. The top slab of the tomb was removed revealing an older, partly damaged marble slab adorned with a crusader-style cross-carving. Beneath it, the limestone burial bed remained intact, offering a glimpse into the site's ancient history. Adjacent to the sepulchre lies the Chapel of the Apparition, exclusively designated for Roman Catholic worship. This sacred space holds profound significance for Catholic pilgrims seeking spiritual solace and connection. On March 22, 2017, a historic ceremony marked the completion of the conservation, restoration, and rehabilitation of the Edicule. Dignitaries from Armenia, Greece, and various countries, along with leaders of Christian churches and numerous pilgrims, gathered to witness this momentous occasion. An altar now stands at Golgotha, where the Lord's crucifixion took place. Pilgrims can venerate the precise spot where the Lord's cross was planted in the ground. Above the altar hangs a crucifix depicting the crucified Lord with closed eyes, serving as a poignant reminder of the sacrifice made for humanity. This solemn ceremony commemorated the restoration of the Edicule, reaffirming the enduring significance of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the crucifix in Roman Catholic worship. According to the Constitution Emus by Benedict XV, issued on July 16, 1746, the crucifix must be placed on the altar during Mass. The Roman Missal's rubric specifies that the crucifix should be positioned at the center of the altar between the candlesticks, ensuring visibility to both the celebrant and the congregation. If the crucifix is temporarily removed for any reason, another may take its place at a lower position, but it must remain visible to all attendees. However, two exceptions exist to this rule. When the crucifixion is depicted as the main feature of an altarpiece or picture behind the altar. In such cases, the standard crucifix may not be necessary. Before Emperor Constantine's reign in the 4th century, Christians were cautious about openly depicting the cross due to fear of ridicule or persecution. However, with the rise of Christianity's acceptance, the crucifix became a central symbol in Roman Catholic worship signifying the sacrifice of Jesus Christ 
and serving as a reminder to believers. After Emperor Constantine's conversion to Christianity, crucifixion was banned as a form of execution. Instead, the cross and the Chiro monogram became prominent symbols of the Christian faith. This led to the widespread use of these symbols in Christian art and funerary monuments around 350 AD. In the centuries following Constantine's reign, Christian veneration of the cross focused on Christ's triumph over evil and death. Initially, crucifixes depicted Christ alive, with eyes open and arms outstretched, emphasizing his divinity despite his wounds. By the 9th century, artists began emphasizing the realistic portrayal of Christ's suffering and death. Western representations of the crucifixion evolved to convey a heightened sense of pain and agony. Romanesque crucifixes often depicted Christ wearing a royal crown, while later Gothic styles replaced this with a crown of thorns. Transformation of Crucifix Depictions In the 20th century, a new emphasis emerged in Roman Catholicism regarding crucifixion depictions. Particularly in liturgical crucifixes, Christ on the cross is portrayed as a crowned and vested king and priest, with less emphasis on the marks of his suffering. Despite this shift, the crucifix remains a powerful symbol of Christ and integral to practices such as exorcisms. On Wednesday, March 29th, a purported miraculous occurrence was reported at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, the holy city revered by followers of the Christian faith. Father Theodore Dodd, a custodian of the church, witnessed an extraordinary event within its hallowed walls. He shared an account of the miracle that unfolded, adding to the church's historic significance. A remarkable event unfolded at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem during the early hours of the day. The eyes of the crucifix icon, positioned directly above an altar at the exact coordinates of Jesus Christ's crucifixion, began to glow ominously. Previously sealed shut for eternity, the eyes suddenly opened and remained so throughout the entire day, captivating several witnesses besides Father Theodore Dodd. Father Theodore Dodd took to his Facebook page on April 1st to share a gripping narrative of the extraordinary occurrence. Among the many priests and visitors present, he recounted the testimony of his friend, Arinder Malus Bas, whose acquaintance vividly captured the moment through photographs. According to Father Theodore, the normally closed eyes of the crucified Christ on the icon remained open, defying the usual order of things and leaving an indelible mark on all who bore witness to this divine spectacle, expression of awe and wonder. Early the next day, on March 30th, Arkham Andrite Malakos shared the pictures on his Facebook page expressing awe by writing, Wondrous art thou, O Lord, in thy saints. The cross of Golgotha opened its eyes. This occurrence marks the first time such an event has transpired. The crucified Lord on Golgotha has always been depicted with closed eyes, but on this day, for reasons unknown, the eyes miraculously opened. In a Facebook post dated April 1st, Father Theodore Dodd pens a gripping narrative detailing the extraordinary event witnessed by priests and visitors alike. Following the original article's publication, a plethora of comments and feedback flooded in. Some sources affirm the miracle, citing contacts in Jerusalem, while others claim it has been denied by the Holy Sepulchre. Despite differing opinions, the event underscores the countless miracles that have unfolded in the Holy Land reminding believers of God's continued blessings upon His Church through such divine interventions. This miraculous event occurred just a week after renovating the revered Edicule, which shelters the Lord's tomb. It precedes by two weeks the highly anticipated annual celebration of the Holy Fire within the sacred precincts of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre on Holy Saturday. This recent event isn't the first to be met with skepticism. Similar occurrences have been reported in the past, casting doubt on their authenticity. One such example occurred in early August 2016, when a viral video purported to show a statue of Jesus Christ in a Mexican church opening and closing its eyes miraculously. Despite garnering international media attention, 
skepticism prevailed, with many attributing the incident to an optical illusion or video editing. The footage from the Chapel of Saltillo sparked widespread discussion on social media, but claims of authenticity by paranormal investigator Ivan Esamia did little to quell doubts. Similarly, in November 2016, a small village in Nigeria became the center of attention when the Catholic Church of St. Augustine reported an incident involving a hanging crucifix of Christ emitting a radiant light. Witnesses claimed the carbon copy of Christ, resembling his post-resurrection appearance, shimmered like precious stone, but skepticism persisted despite the reports. The recent phenomenon drew a diverse crowd, attracting both Christians and non-Christians who eagerly sought to touch the illuminated crucifix, fervently uttering prayers for salvation. However, amidst the fervor, doubts emerged regarding the phenomenon's authenticity. Some viewers suggested mass hysteria rather than a divine occurrence. Father Theodore, a custodian of the Church of the Holy Sealer, encourages a shift in focus from the external manifestations to the essence of faith. He emphasizes that miracles can strengthen wavering faith, but are not the sole foundation. True faith goes beyond miraculous displays, rooted in profound encounters with God incarnate, communion with Him, and witnessing His crucifixion, death, resurrection, and ascension. Father Theodore points to the often overlooked miracle of transubstantiation during the Divine Liturgy, where bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. This, he argues, is the greatest miracle, a sacred reality to be ever mindful of. So what do you think of the new miracle that has happened in Israel? Comment below and subscribe for more.